The wonderful actress Audrey Hepburn said, to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. In our history, gardens have played a great role in getting us through times of stress and anxiety. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so you can become a better gardener. Today, let's talk about Victory Gardens. If you're of a certain age, you probably know what a Victory Garden is. And if you're old enough, you may have actually worked in one as a child. Victory Gardens really helped us get through World War I and World War II, when the world was filled with anxiety and dread. And I think today, in these troubling times, what we need is Victory Gardens. Before I discuss how you can begin a Victory Garden, let's look back into history to find out how they began. In March of 1917, the National War Garden Commission was formed. It was a government agency that put out pamphlets and motivational posters to get the average citizen thinking about growing their own food. This was important because many of the soldiers marching off to World War I had been farmers. So the entire food system was disrupted and food shortages were impending. But if the average person could become a gardener and start growing their own food, they could really relieve some of that food pressure on the system. And it worked. In 1917, there were three million war gardens. And in 1918, there were 5.2 million war gardens. People were growing their own food, and they felt like they were doing their part to help the war effort. Citizens were growing gardens in what had been city parks and vacant lots, in window boxes and little plots in their backyard. It was something that even the average child could get involved with. In fact, many children became known as soldiers of the soil, and it worked so well that it relieved the problem dramatically. And then the war ended, and everybody got back to normal. And particularly in the 1920s when the economy was good, all of those war gardens faded. Until 20 years later, and the beginning of World War II. With the world at war again, the stress and the anxiety returned. But Victory Gardens were there to help out. What had been War Gardens had been renamed by George Washington Carver to Victory Gardens. And they were very necessary because a lot of those trucks that had been moving the food that the people were eating were now moving soldiers. And some of those ships that were bringing food from other countries were falling victim to submarine warfare. So once again, the population had to start growing their food. In the spring of 1942, food rationing took place because of the shortages. But that same year, there were 15 million Victory Gardens. And by 1944, there were 20 million Victory Gardens. The government was producing pamphlets, lots of information to get that average person to understand how to garden. In fact, I've got a link below to a pamphlet that was produced in 1942. A lot of the information back then is the same information that's valid today. Let's take a look at some of that information that was included in one of those war pamphlets for Victory Gardens. Things that you should do. You should prepare your soil. Cultivate your garden, use water, make a compost heap, plan your garden before you start, and have a garden this summer. All great ideas, but things you shouldn't do. You shouldn't think that gardening is mysterious or difficult. You shouldn't kill yourself working in the garden. You shouldn't fail to plan succession crops. You shouldn't cheat in the process, and you shouldn't think that you know more than the man who grew your seeds. A lot of that advice is still true today. And one reason that the Victory Gardens worked so well 
is they improved morale because people had something to do. They weren't just growing their own food. They were helping the soldier at the front because what the farmers were producing was going to the soldiers. The people were growing their own in the same parks, in the same vacant lots, even in zoos. The average person was learning to garden and they were becoming better in the process. And a lot of that stress and anxiety was relieved. Let's jump forward 75 years until today. And the world is at war again, but this time we face a common enemy. And it's a simple virus. But the stress and the anxiety and the fear is now running rampant. We don't have some of those same issues as far as food shortages are concerned. The food is still there, but we've had some panic that have emptied store shelves. To help relieve some of those concerns, a garden can be the answer because so many people are unsure about tomorrow. And remember, to plant a garden is to have faith in tomorrow. A big reason why I garden is just the physical and mental well-being that it brings me. It's calming. It's soothing. I feel better in the garden. And when I'm growing plants, a lot of what's happening in the rest of the world really doesn't matter. I can grow my own food and know exactly where it came from and how I did it. I can choose those foods that I want to eat. And especially in this time where you might be concerned about what you can find in the store, maybe now's the time to consider growing some of those things that you regularly go to the store to buy. It's very easy to grow lettuce, to grow a lot of the normal vegetables that you're so used to picking up and paying for. Well, think about growing them yourself in your own garden today. And this time around, you don't have to wait for the government to publish a pamphlet to tell you how to start a victory garden. This time, you can start your victory garden with the information already available. Here on the Gardener Scott channel, I have many, many videos that can help you out. And the information that I don't cover is covered by many other sources. Just make that decision to start. Just start in a simple plot in your backyard, or maybe a windowsill, or if you're already gardening, add another bed. But get out there, plant a seed, grow a plant, and harvest something that you can eat and enjoy. And at the end of the season, you'll be able to look back and realize that the stress and anxiety just melted away. I find Victory Gardens very inspirational to think back to those millions of average citizens that became gardeners during a time of need. And in the process, they improved their own morale as they made the system better. This time, let's all start Victory Gardens and let's keep them going. Let's not stop our gardens after the war has been won. Let's keep our Victory Gardens as a normal part of our life. And when you have that type of garden, you will be inspired. In fact, it'll be very easy for you to share your story with others and motivate your friends and family to become gardeners as well and have their own victory gardens for as long as we can envision. It gives you the opportunity to be prepared and to not forget some of the skills that you've learned in times of adversity. I encourage you to share this video with others. Let's all grow a victory garden. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.